Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. This video explains the valve train configuration, belt drive versus chain drive, valve angle, valve spring surge, valve cooling, and valve clearance. OHV stands for overhead valve, where the camshaft is located at the lower part of the engine and the valves are operated via long pushrods. Since there are fewer components in the upper part of the engine, the overall engine height can be reduced. And with the heavier parts concentrated in the lower section, the engine center of gravity is also lowered. The low center of gravity of the engine is not an advantage on its own. But when installed in a vehicle, it positively impacts handling performance. At high engine speeds, the deflection of the pushrods and the inertia caused by their weight can lead to issues such as incorrect valve timing and reduced valve lift. OHV engines were commonly used until the 1980s, but they have rarely been used in passenger cars since the 1990s. Even today, only the Chevrolet Corvette continues to use OHV. But this is believed to be more about maintaining brand identity than for performance. OHC stands for overhead camshaft, where the camshaft is positioned at the top of the engine. Unlike OHV engines, which have issues with pushrods, the design allows for higher engine speeds. On the other hand, both the overall engine height and the engine center of gravity are higher compared to OHV engines. There are two types based on the direction of intake and exhaust gas flow. The type where both intake and exhaust gas flow in the same direction is called reverse flow, while the type where they flow in opposite directions is called cross flow. In a reverse flow configuration, there are drawbacks such as the hot exhaust gases warming up the intake air, and the inability to make the valve diameters larger, because the two valves are positioned side by side. For these reasons, Cross-flow configuration are generally considered more suitable for high-performance engines. There were three valve OHC engines with two intake valves and one exhaust valve. And in rare cases, even four valve OHC engines. The OHC configuration became popular in the 1960s, but the number of engines adopting it started to decline from the 1990s. DOHC stands for double overhead camshaft, referring to an engine that has a separate camshaft for both intake and exhaust. It is easy to implement a four valve configuration, allowing for a larger valve opening area. DOHC engines were initially used in high performance engines. In the late 1980s, after Toyota began using DOHC in efficiency focused engines, it became mainstream. Today, most passenger car engines use DOHC configuration. A typical DOHC engine has four valves, but in the 1990s, the Ferrari F355 and Toyota 4AGE engines adopted a five-valve configuration. Until the 1970s, camshaft drive systems primarily used chains. Chain drives had drawbacks such as higher noise, higher cost, and the need for lubrication. In the 1980s, they were replaced by belt drive systems, which overcame those drawbacks. However, belt drive systems also had drawbacks. They were less durable than chains and, depending on the car manufacturer, needed to be replaced every 50,000 to 160,000 kilometers. Additionally, to ensure strength, belts are wider than chains, which increases the engine length. Moreover, since belts cannot be bent at sharp angles like chains, larger diameter sprockets are required, resulting in a wider engine as well. Due to these drawbacks, along with the introduction of silent chains, chain drive systems became dominant again from the 1990s. Today, most engines use chain drives. In high-power engines, it's necessary to enlarge the valve opening area as much as possible in order to intake more air into the engine. To achieve this, the intake and exhaust valves are arranged at a wider angle and larger diameter valves are used. As a result, 
the surface area of the combustion chamber increases, causing the energy from the combustion gases to dissipate as heat into the cylinder head, which reduces combustion efficiency. To address this issue, Toyota developed a DOHC engine with a smaller valve angle in the mid-1980s. This allowed for a reduction in the energy lost by the combustion gases, improving combustion efficiency and increasing fuel economy. Since the introduction of this engine, DOHC engines have been used in passenger cars, not just in sports models. At that time, a belt drive system was used for valve actuation. But as mentioned earlier, belt drive systems cannot use small sprockets. Therefore, Toyota developed a system where the intake camshaft was driven by a belt and the exhaust camshaft was driven by the intake camshaft through gears. When chain-driven systems, which allow the use of smaller diameter sprockets, became more common, this system gradually disappeared. At high engine speeds, a phenomenon occurs in which the valve springs resonate, causing the valves to be unable to follow the cam's movement. This phenomenon is referred to as valve spring surge. In the worst case, the valves and pistons can collide, causing significant damage to the engine. To prevent this, two springs with different natural frequencies are combined, or springs with uneven pitch are used. The exhaust valve is exposed to exhaust gases that can reach temperatures as high as 800 degrees Celsius. The heat of the exhaust valve is transferred through the valve guide to the engine coolant inside the cylinder head. In thermally demanding engines, such as turbocharged engines, some engines use sodium-filled valves. The exhaust valves are made hollow and filled with metallic sodium. Sodium has a melting point of about 98 degrees Celsius. So during engine operation, it becomes liquid and moves inside the exhaust valve, which reciprocates at high speed, transferring the heat absorbed by the valve head to the valve guides. This technology is very old, and was already being used in aircraft engines during World War II. Valve Clearance also referred to as tappet clearance, is the gap between the valve and the rocker arm, or between the cam and the tappet. If this gap is not properly adjusted, it can cause a shift in valve timing or a reduction in valve lift, leading to improper engine operation. We will learn through highly exaggerated animation. At the moment, this engine is cold, and the valve clearance is properly adjusted. Once the engine is warmed up, the metal in the cam, valve, and cylinder head expands, reducing the clearance, and the engine operates properly. If the valve clearance is set to zero when the engine is cold, the cam will always push down on the valve after the engine warms up, causing issues such as rough idling. For an engine with rocker arms, the valve clearance is adjusted using the adjustment screw at the tip of the rocker arm. In the case of a DOHC engine with tappets, adjustment is made by selecting adjustment shims of varying thicknesses. In modern engines, optimizing cam profiles and rotating shims by offsetting the centers of the cam and tappet prevent wear. Therefore, if engine oil is properly maintained, adjustments are generally not needed for around 100,000 kilometers. Additionally, in engines with a swing arm, many use hydraulic lash adjusters that utilize engine oil pressure and springs to maintain the valve clearance at zero. From the late 1980s, various automobile manufacturers began adopting systems that allowed for variable control of valve timing and valve lift. Honda VTEC and BMW Valvetronic are well known examples. If you want to learn more about these devices, Please watch the video, How Variable Valvetrain Systems Work. There's a link in the description. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you in the next video.